Before we begin, please let me know if there's any way to save Asphalt 9 onto Facebook or something else so I can use the same account for multiple devices. Thanks. Okay, so today we're taking a look at a video that has not been requested by literally anybody, but I feel like most of you would probably enjoy it. Today we're comparing Asphalt 9 with its predecessor, Asphalt 8, and we're seeing the differences, similarities, and overall which one's better. Before we actually get into this video topic, I do have a few important announcements. Number one, I'm at a new location right now filming, and I'm right next to a really busy road. There are cars passing by literally every three seconds. It's so hard for me to film without audio interference. I'm trying my best, but so far, just this first minute of the video has taken 25 reshoots. So honestly, I think I'm gonna keep it a little more simple. If a car passes by later in this video, which it will for sure, if there's any audio interference, I'm really sorry about that, but it's honestly gonna take me years to finish this video if I have to get it perfect. My final announcement is that, though I'm using the same microphone as always, I'm in a different room setting, so just the atmosphere, the, the sound effects of this room will be different from other places I've been, so my voice will probably be at least slightly different. But with those announcements, let's get into this video. I hope you guys enjoy it. The first major thing that we're going to take a look at should be pretty obvious, it's the blueprint system of both games. Now, Asphalt 8 had only a few cars with blueprints, and a lot of us hated this system because it's kind of pay to win. You can buy a blueprint for a set amount of tokens, but it's really expensive. You go to Asphalt 9 and you'll see that every single car is blueprints. That may sound scary, but to be honest, it's a lot easier getting blueprints in Asphalt 9 over Asphalt 8. Though there may seem like no huge downsides for blueprints in Asphalt 9, there is, and this leads to our next topic of comparison, it is the upgrades in both games. Asphalt 8's upgrade system is pretty simple. Once you get the car or obtain it, you can upgrade it all the way to its final rank. In Asphalt 9, however, there's something called starring up. For each car, there is three stars you can get total. You start out with one star, that's the stock car. And at one star, you're able to upgrade the car until level five for its tuning. Once you reach there, however, you need more blueprints in order to star up a next level. Once you star up again, you're at two stars. You can upgrade to level eight. Then after that, once you get to star three, you can upgrade the rest. But basically, it's a lot of blueprints that you need. It's kind of time consuming if you don't have the necessary things. I don't like that. In my opinion, Asphalt 8 takes the cake here. It wins in terms of a more simple upgrade system but both are still pay to win for their upgrades. So, you know, that's one of their similarities right there. They're both pay to win, haha. <laughs> Speaking of pay to win, let's take a look at the in-app purchases for both games. For Asphalt 8, tokens and credits can cost up to $99.99. Seems pretty expensive, and don't get me wrong, it is. However, for each purchase, you also get something called VIP points. This gives you an extra few rewards, that I thought would be pretty cool to get, so I spent $300 on this game. Really not my proudest moment, but as you can see, I'm VIP level 10. And I'll tell you, it's not really worth it, the rewards aren't that great, and it was definitely not worth spending 300 bucks. But don't worry, it gets so much worse, because Asphalt 8 has a car called the GTA Spano 2015 that can only be unlocked at VIP level 15. And before, I think a year ago, that meant spending 4,000 real dollars in real life. Which is absurd. You can buy an old Fiat, okay, with $4,000. It was super pay to win, nobody liked that, and I think a few people got it. Most of them were hackers, but there were probably one or two sad kids that accidentally spent $4,000 on this car. And that's just crazy. I'm pretty sure since then the price has been decreased by a little bit, but it's still horrible, 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 horrible. Which is why Asphalt 9 wins in terms of being less paid to win. Because even though you can buy tokens and credits for $100, there is no GTA Spano 2015 for $4,000. So Asphalt 9 does win. It is still kind of pay to win though, but 
Good for you, Asphalt 9, you beat your predecessor. You do have to keep in mind though, Asphalt 9 just came out, so Gameloft could be cooking something up for another $4,000. For example, the Lamborghini Terzo Millennio. What if that happens to be $4,000? Well, people would hate this game forever, but you never know, it could happen. So what I recommend is, yes, this is tips with Eris, keep your expectations super low, just assume the worst. Assume that every car in the future will cost $20,000 in real life for this game, and then your expectations will be broken, it will be surpassed, because you kept your expectations so low to begin with. See? That's how you be smart, guys. Next up, we're gonna look at the compatibility with devices due to the graphics of the game. The following footage from both games was used by the same computer, just so we could do a quick comparison. For Asphalt 8, this computer could do really well on high graphics, and honestly, it could do well on extreme graphics. Now I didn't show it here, because I personally don't like extreme graphics that much. Then you go to Asphalt 9. For this computer, I could only manage to get to low graphics. Can't even reach medium. That's kind of crazy, I, I really dislike that. It's not compatible with that many devices. Now for phones, that's a different story. For iOS, even an iPhone 5 could handle the highest graphics. But for Windows, good luck. Cause you really need a fast computer in order to get to the highest graphics. It's kind of frustrating. And I wish the game was more like Asphalt 8 where more people could use it. There are so many people in my comments sections that are telling me I can't even play this game because my device is too slow or it's not compatible. Moving on though, the next topic we really should look at is the nitro efficiency and the usage of the two games. For Asphalt 8, the cars have a different nitro efficiency. Every car is different. Some cars have nitro that lasts forever. Other cars have nitro that runs out pretty darn quick. Now, in this footage, I'm using the Mazda RX-8 Special Edition, which has one of the worst nitro efficiencies in the entire game. Still, even though this nitro efficiency is considered really bad for Asphalt 8, it's nothing compared to Asphalt 9, because your nitrous runs out in literally 1.5 seconds. Well, not literally, but something like that. It feels like 1.5 seconds. It's too quick. I really don't like that. Like, I don't know, maybe people thought it would be more realistic so they made the game that way, but I don't like that. There are people in my comment sections, once again, I don't know why I'm mentioning the people in my comment sections, but I'm just doing that. They prefer the 10 second nitro compared to the lasting 3 second nitro. And I agree with them. I wish the game could change that. Talking about realistic, we should also look at the speeds of cars in both games. For Asphalt 8, you got cars that could reach a speed of 335 miles an hour. It was insanely fake, yet super fun, because races ended pretty quickly, and you could kind of feel the speed. In Asphalt 9, cars are so much slower, they take on a more realistic approach. In the cars that I'm driving right now, in the earlier classes, your cars can go 150 miles an hour. That's too realistic for me. Maybe the game really wanted to do that, but I did not want that, and I know a lot of people didn't want that either. It's kind of fun having cars that can go 300 miles an hour. It's not so fun when you're limiting it to half that speed. That's how I feel. I don't know how you guys feel. Tell me in the comment sections below, do you prefer this realer, more realistic speed, or do you prefer our 300 miles an hour speed? Next up, we gotta talk about when there's no Wi-Fi and whether or not you can play the game. For Asphalt 8, yes you can. I mean sure, there are a few restrictions with no Wi-Fi for the game, there's a few cars you can't use, the public events, you can't do those. But you can still just do a regular race, just do it for fun, when there's no Wi-Fi. For Asphalt 9, however, you can't do anything in the game when there's no Wi-Fi. And the creators of the game said that, oh, we're trying to limit hackers in the game. And I see why they might do that, but... Why? What's the point? Because if you're not gonna have any offline option available for Asphalt 9, all the hackers will try to hack in the multiplayer races that we're playing in when we're online with Wi-Fi. I think that's overall worse for us players that don't hack, okay? But I don't know, that's just how I feel. Still, it is annoying that we can't play when it's offline. 
We're almost done with this video, but I have one last comparison to make. This comparison is basically how easy it is to master each game with tools in the game that are provided for you. And for me, Asphalt 9 definitely wins, because though both games have tutorials on how to get better, Asphalt 9 has something called Touch Drive, and this Touch Drive system can help you wreck less and also decide on which path to choose. I think it's a pretty helpful system, although some people think it's kind of useless. Still, I think Asphalt 9 does help you out quite a bit to get better at this game, while Asphalt 8, less helpfulness. Both games are still hard, however, and they're completely different from one another, so, you know, that's just how I feel. And with that statement, we have reached the end of this video. Hope you guys at least somewhat enjoyed, and if you did, feel free to like this video. Can we get 300 likes? I hope so. And if you didn't like this video, still hit that like button, because why not? And if you have at least some interest in this channel, feel free to subscribe. I call my fans the Cheese God Army. It's a really cringy name, but I kind of like it. It has some ring to it, some effect that I just enjoy. If you're not convinced enough to subscribe to this channel, just look at this sad teenage boy right here. If you subscribe, he'll smile so much more. So make sure to do that. Lastly, check out my YouTube Instagram, at the official axis, where I post pictures of my life, some cars, good stuff, you know. We've passed 770 followers, the goal is 900 followers, so we can pass my real life Instagram I use with my friends. I think that'd be pretty cool to have a YouTube Instagram that's larger than my regular Instagram. I don't know. Feel free to check that out, link in description. But with that, thank you so much for listening, and I hope to see you in my future videos. Bye-bye.